Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we've got the first in what I hope will become a series of videos about museum ships. Uh, I want to talk about some of the reasons why museum ships succeed, uh, why they fail, I'd like to visit some, uh, and talk about lessons we can learn from uh, different museum ships and eras of preserving vessels. In today's video, we're going to talk about the first museum ship, or what I consider to be the first. So, uh, the modern practice of preserving vessels to display for the public is a relatively recent thing. The longest continuously operating museum ship is the battleship Texas, which became a museum in 1948. She was decommissioned from the Navy, uh, given to the state of Texas, and then operated uh, by the state all the way up through the present day. So, really, museum ships only date back 70 or 80 years. There were earlier attempts to set up museum ships uh, in the 1920s. The Spanish-American War era battleship Oregon was uh, briefly operated as a museum ship. Uh, and many of the museum ships we have today, the older sailing ships, uh, went from being active commissioned vessels to being used as training ships or barrack ships or other secondary purposes um, while still part of the Navy. Uh, and some of that may have even uh, involved people coming on board and visiting them as a historical curiosity. Uh, but it wasn't until the 1950s or so, uh, especially in the United States, that these ships start to get turned over uh, to become actual functioning museums. What I believe the first museum ship was uh, is a ship known as the Ship of Theseus, which uh, operated as a museum ship in ancient Greece. So let me read to you what uh, the ancients have to say. Uh, Plutarch wrote this, the ship wherein Theseus and the youth of Athens returned had 30 oars and was preserved by the Athenians down even to the time of Demetrius Phalaris, uh, who was the uh, ruler of Athens from about 350 BC to about 280 BC. Uh, For they took away the old planks as they decayed, putting in new and stronger timber in their place, insomuch that this ship became a standing example among the philosophers for the logical question of things that grow. Uh, on one side holding that uh, the ship remained the same, and the other contending that it was not the same. So we know about this ancient museum ship because of the philosophical debate. Uh, and, and the Ship of Theseus debate is very similar to, uh, in this country, the debate about George Washington's axe. Uh, if you have the axe that George Washington used to chop down the cherry tree, uh, and the head, head of the axe breaks and you have to replace it, uh, and then the shaft of the axe breaks and you have to replace that, uh, do you still have George Washington's axe, even though none of the remaining pieces are... Uh, the actual originals. Uh, so that is a debate among philosophers to this day. And imagine with a ship, it's even bigger. Uh, we can bring this debate up to the modern day. Is the frigate Constitution uh, or the uh, ship of the line Victory still the original ship that uh, Commodore Hall or Admiral Nelson walked on? As the wood rots, it is replaced with new pieces. Uh, but we are talking about thousands and thousands of pieces of wood and metal fasteners and pieces of artillery and uh, rigging and mast and sails. As you put the new material into the vessel, it becomes a part of that vessel. So is that then original? 
some sources say that there's about 5% of Constitution or victory left that is original material to uh, when the vessel was, was in service. Uh, does that make the whole vessel original or is it a modern reproduction? You have to decide that for yourselves. I know what I believe, but uh, you have to decide that. Uh, but this video isn't about the philosophical debate. The philosophical debate is why we know uh, that this vessel was around. Uh, so Theseus was a uh, age of heroes, uh, Greek demigod character, uh, and he, in ancient Greece, the age of heroes is what we now refer to as the Bronze Age. Uh, so when, when Mycenaean or Minoan societies were, were at their peak in the various Bronze Age periods in uh, Greece. Uh, and uh, to, to the ancient Greeks, that was the Age of Heroes, and that is when uh, the great heroes like Heracles and Odysseus and Agamemnon uh, existed, and they believed that they were real-life historic uh, figures. And the stories of these characters were passed down through an age when there was no writing via an oral tradition of poetry. And then it became to be uh, written down in the Iron Age. And uh, these stories formed the basis of uh, Western culture. And so they were recorded again and again and uh, made it through the fall of the Roman Empire and to the modern day. Uh, and nowadays, we tend to look at them as myth and legend. But perhaps there is some truth to it. Uh, maybe these famous characters, this Agamemnon character, this uh, Achilles character, maybe they actually did participate in the fall of Troy. Maybe that was an actual historic event with actual figures. Uh, and uh, it has been largely... Uh, mythicalized over time, mythicized, but uh, maybe there are some kernels of truth there. Uh, so the story of Theseus is that uh, the island of Crete, which was the center of Minoan society during the earlier Bronze Age, uh, was dominated the Aegean Sea, and they demanded a tribute from Athens, the, the youth of Athens. I believe it was six boys and six girls, although it might be 12. Uh, and in the story, the youth of Athens are fed to the Minotaur every year. And the Minotaur was the monstrous uh, son of uh, the king of the Minoans on Crete. Uh, and he was trapped in a labyrinth. Well, archaeologists have unearthed the uh, royal lodgings in Crete that were the center place of Minoan society, and uh, it is fairly labyrinthine in there from, from what's left of the ruins. It was made out of stone, so much of the walls still exist, the foundations at least. Uh, so you can see all of these winding turns in different rooms. The real reason it had that many rooms is because that's where they would store a lot of the grain and other material that was given as tribute. Uh, so, so a lot of small rooms for storage. But for the Iron Age Greeks, looking back on these Bronze Age ruins, which are absolutely massive and labyrinthine, uh, it's a natural leap to say that this is where uh, a monster must have been housed. Uh, because it's a labyrinth and it couldn't find its way out. Um, and perhaps the story of the youth of Athens isn't that every year these kids are being taken by the Minoans to sacrifice to the Minotaur. Uh, maybe it is something that happened a lot in the ancient world, which is as a vassal to the Minoans on Crete, the city-state of Athens had to send the youth of their... Uh, uh, of their leading families 
to be um, educated or re-educated and uh, held hostage in uh, the Minoan cities so that uh, Athens would not rise in rebellion against them. And then these youths are educated in the Minoan style and they go back and continue to spread Minoan culture and uh, maybe even have a fondness for uh, Cretan culture uh, and don't rebel in the future. And in the meantime, if the leading families of Athens do rebel, well, then you execute all of their kids, which you have. Uh, so maybe there is an actual... Uh, premise for this. If, if I remember correctly, Theseus was descended from one of the royal families there. Uh, and so that sort of feeds into this real life version of the legend. And Theseus was said to live prior to the uh, Trojan War. He, he was not one of the heroes still around at the time of the Trojan War. Uh, so for a number of years, we thought the Trojan War was a myth. But then a city in roughly the right place was found, which was dubbed as Troy. Uh, and some of the layers of that city show that there was a great war there that destroyed an entire period. Uh, and then a future city was built basically on the rubble of the old, uh, which happened to form a very nice defensive hill. Uh, so if the Trojan War ended up being real, uh, maybe some of the main players who show up in myth are actually real-life personalities as well. The Trojan War theoretically happened around uh, 1250 BC, based on dating of the city of Troy, uh, which means that Theseus lived sometime prior to that, uh, maybe 1300 BC, maybe 1400 BC. Uh, so anyway, now we're actually coming to the point of this story. Theseus sailed to Crete on a ship of 30 oars with the youth of Athens. And after defeating the Minotaur, he and the youth of Athens were allowed to return home to Crete, uh, return home to Athens. Uh, and theoretically, this small 30 oared uh, vessel was then preserved by the city of Athens. Uh, so these mythological age of heroes, uh, figures, give these cities a lot of their culture and identity. So having an object from them uh, is hugely important. Uh, and for Athens, it was the ship of Theseus. Now, in theory, a 30 oared ship is pretty lightly built. Uh, it can easily be dragged up on the shore to receive maintenance work, and it can be uh, housed inside of basically a shed. Athens maintained a fleet of something like 300 uh, warships, uh, each one with about 150 oars. Uh, and these ships could be pulled into ship sheds in Athens' fortified harbor, the Piraeus, uh, to receive maintenance work and to be there during the winter. Uh, so it is easy to believe that uh, a ship could be preserved. When you remove the ship from the water, uh, it's not deteriorating very quickly. If you start removing rotted wood and replacing it uh, in a like fashion, you're retaining much of the original shape, uh, the original ship in form and function. Uh, and according to Polybius, the ship was maintained until it's known to have existed until the reign of uh, a traditioner, a particular leader, let's see, uh, Demetrius Phalaris, around 300 BC. Uh, so the ship, if it is the real ship of Theseus, existed sometime about 1300 BC, and it is recorded through most of Iron Age Athenian history up until about uh, 300 BC. So that means they could have preserved this vessel for a thousand years, which is really unprecedented. Museum ships in this country, uh, the oldest one would be Constitution, which dates back to nearly the founding of the country in 1797. Uh, so she is now 
a little over 200 years old, 220 some years old. Uh, so imagine keeping her afloat uh, for another 400 years, uh, excuse me, 800 years to equal the age of the ship of Theseus. It's doable. It's easy to replace rotted wood. What is difficult is getting the money uh, and uh, the cultural willpower to do that. During much of the time that uh, the ship of Theseus was maintained, Athens was a major regional power. Um, the site of the formation of democracy, uh, resisting the Persian invasions, uh, the center of something of a commercial empire, a, a large naval power. Uh, they were able to dominate their neighbors, and they were very proud of their heritage, which they traced back to these Bronze Age heroes. So uh, the willpower was there to maintain this ship. When the culture shifted there, and Athens was no longer the center of an empire and was no longer... Um, an interesting uh, did, didn't, wasn't developing new uh, history and culture of their own and, and they were run by a series of dictators uh, dictators like to suppress the local culture as a way of maintaining their control uh, so this ship was allowed to rot at that point, the money was no longer there to continue to maintain her so could we save a ship like the Battleship New Jersey for a thousand years? Yes. Uh, if the United States remains a country and our service in World War II uh, remains an important value of this country, the money can continue to be found and the uh, restoration work can continue to be performed. Countries don't tend to last a thousand years, though. Um, they change. The culture changes. What they value changes. Uh, think about World War I. The Battleship Texas was built during World War I, uh, and as long as there were people alive from World War I, that was a major cultural event. It's uh, perhaps the most memorialized event worldwide. But now we live in an age where there are no survivors from World War I left, uh, and the Battleship Texas is having trouble finding the money to continue to operate. Uh, the Cruiser Olympia from the Spanish-American War. There's no one from the Spanish-American War in the 1890s left. So she is having trouble being maintained. Uh, she was the flagship of Admiral George Dewey. She was once the uh, most famous ship in the country. And uh, now she can't get the money to go into dry dock. Hasn't been in dry dock since 1945. So as these values change and the importance uh, of these ships change, uh, and as the debate rages on what is authentic, the ship is still comprised of all original parts from when she was in service. But a lot of the equipment here on Battleship New Jersey is from the 1980s and 90s at the end of her service. It's not from World War II. When you come on the ship, you're not seeing the ship as she looked in World War II. You're seeing the ship as she looked around 1990 or 91. Is it authentic? Is it worth saving? Uh, is that important enough to put the billions of dollars into a ship like this to save? These are all questions that we have to answer as a nation uh, and uh, that we have to continue to answering, to, to keep answering over time. Right now, all of these World War II ships that form the bulk of our museum fleet uh, are worth saving. They're hugely historically significant, uh, and they're hugely culturally significant. In 50 years, there will be no World War II survivors left. Will they still be culturally and historically significant enough to save? They'll definitely be historically significant enough, but will the United States still exist as a country that uh, finds these vessels culturally significant? Uh, 
will our involvement in things like World War II, Korea, the Vietnam War, uh, the Cold War, be something that we think is important enough that we need to maintain a museum on or a museum vessel on? Uh, only time will tell. E eventually, even the ship of Theseus uh, outlived its... Uh, ability to be maintained. Thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, if you have any thoughts or comments on this, I love discussion this, discussing this topic, uh, leave it down in the comment section down below. Do you think the ship of Theseus actually existed? Do you think it uh, existed for the full a thousand years? Or do you think they found uh, some old looking ship and said, this must be the ship of Theseus and preserved it and it wasn't even accurate. Do you think Theseus existed? Let's talk about it in the comments section. Uh, if you would like to support us, uh, even though these ships are still culturally and historically significant, uh, we're having trouble supporting ourselves during the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, New Jersey is currently closed and myself and all other staff are laid off. So uh, check the description down below for ways you can support the museum and our uh, YouTube channel. In particular, there's a GoFundMe campaign there that goes primarily to the YouTube channel. Uh, and remember to like, share, and subscribe. We're trying to put out new content every day. Uh, and uh, if you do that, it'll let us know that you really like this video and you want to see other videos on museum ships and what makes them successful and uh, what makes them not and other museum ship theory. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.